Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy. Today we're building another cool project by Racket. The drum synth is a clever standalone instrument, basically a simple subtractive synth triggered by a built-in piezo mic. The mic is attached to the front panel and you play it by tapping with your fingers while you turn knobs. It reminds me a bit of the classic Coron DS8, same basic principle. And yes, you can interface it with your modular, since it has trigger and CV inputs. In the baggie, you get everything you need except IC sockets and the battery. But this one has a power input jack already soldered onto the PCB, so you can easily use it with a wall wart and not waste batteries. The box is very cleverly cut into a single sheet of PCB material, which you can break apart into its individual parts and assemble by snapping them together. This time I prepared myself and actually had the build guide open in front of me the whole time. I started by measuring and labeling all of the resistors. Remember there's a tolerance, so you'll probably see something very close to the nominal values, like 0.9945 for 1K in my case. I also remembered to start with the ICs. I just soldered them on without sockets, since I was very sure about the position due to checking with the build guide. But if you get sockets, do use them. The only advantage I found for not using sockets is that I can solder some of the leads from the top, which holds the ICs in place when I turn the board around to solder the rest. Next, I installed the transistors. Followed by the diodes, minding their orientation. And then the electrolytic capacitors. Also careful to orient them correctly. I then installed the LEDs with their spacers, careful to keep them very straight and tight. Use the panel to make sure the LEDs lined up with the holes. Now on to the resistors. Good thing I labeled them earlier, makes this much faster. Next come the trim pots. Followed by the film capacitors. And on to the hardware, starting with the toggle switches, then the jacks. I used the snake charmer technique for the first pin on each jack to keep them in place. Now, before placing the pots, let's separate the box parts, since we'll need to make sure the pots can go through their panel holes. We can also go ahead and connect the two wires from the piezo on the panel to the PCB, using the adjacent hole and the knot for strain relief. Now, the panel switches and the pots. Place them, but don't solder yet. Place the panel over the pots and switches, make sure everything is properly aligned, no pots are rubbing against the panel, and the LEDs go through their holes. Assemble the sides of the box, securing them with the jack nuts. Now go ahead and solder the pots and switches. Almost done! Just stick the rubber feet in their slots and it's finished. Plug in the battery and watch the LEDs go. So let's play around with it a little bit. In the meantime, please like and subscribe and stay noisy. See you soon.